Hi everyone. Welcome to the uh, the webinar we're doing today. We're we're going to be looking into boosting your business's sustainability. Uh, let's run in and do a quick poll and see where people are at the moment. So if you want to drop in the comments where where you are at the moment, uh, if you're a shop manager, dive professional, uh, yeah, let us know who you are in the in the comments. Let's see let's see who we've got going through. Great. Good morning, good evening, and probably good afternoon in some parts of the globe. <laughs> so drop your locations in and we'll give you a shout out and let us know if you're a GameTens member or not yet. So um, introducing first, this is Sam with me and I'm Erin. We are from the Lead World Foundation delivering or hosting uh, these evening's webinar. Yeah, so yeah, we're going to be uh, taking you through uh, some of the how to boost your business sustainability. And this could be for if you've already started your journey and you're just looking for some extra tips. Uh, yeah, maybe you're um, yeah, maybe you're just starting out and you don't really know where to go with it. So we're going to try and help you start on that journey as well. Um, so yeah, so I think should we kick things off? Let's dive right in, Sam. <laughs> All right. So we're going to be looking at sustainability. So one of the, the key things that reasons we need to be looking at sustainability is that the tourism industry is shifting. So access to scientific information uh, about the threats to our planet is widely available for people now. And in particular, it's available for the younger generations who are going to be moving forward and taking over uh, as the majority group within this within the tourism industry. So the true sustainability of a business is going to be looking at profit, uh, ensuring that making your business is actually going to make enough profit to support the longevity of that business. It's also going to need the people. So providing opportunities for staff the increasing the quality of life and the well-being, but also for the communities around that business as well. And of course, one of the major points for sustainability within the marine tourism industry is the planet. So without the ocean's ecosystems, businesses are going to fail. Without coral reefs, without the marine life that support the marine tourism industry, there can't be an industry. And this environmental sustainability is that's built into your business is synonymous with high quality. And with that high quality can come high profitability. So by improving the businesses, supporting the local community uh, and offering high quality services, you're going to attract more customers, but you're also going to attract uh, more higher paying customers to come along with that. And move on to the next point which shows us the sustainability survey that the Reef World Foundation conducted in 2022. So this survey really showed something that we'd already known before, but we wanted the data to back it up. So over 2000 responses covering 120 different countries. And we found that what tourists are looking for within the marine tourism industry is they're looking for that high sustainability. They're looking for the environmentally friendly programs they're not too sure how to find it. And so one of the areas of confusion uh, can come from not knowing how to judge whether a business is sustainable. And one of the areas that caused a lot of fear within these groups was the greenwashing. So not knowing if a sustainability stamp on a business might actually be showing that the business is in fact sustainable. So there was a need for a third party environmental accreditation, uh, which is where Greenfins is coming in to fill the gap. Booking.com also like performed similar sustainability surveys. It's being performed by other travel partners and it's showing the same things over and over again. Travelers are really rethinking what they want in, when they mean value. They're looking for low impact. They're aware of the env environmental impacts and the need to be more sustainable. And they're looking for businesses that can show that they are actually doing this. 
so this is where the Greenfins initiative really comes in. The Greenfins is run in partnership with the Reef World Foundation uh, and the UN Environment Programme. Its aim is to reduce the local impacts from the marine tourism industry. It started around 2004, so it's been spanning for almost 20 years of experience uh, and is a proven environmental assessment model. So the works, Greenfins works directly with governments, with nonprofits, but also with the private sector. So on the ground with the industry pros. Um, one way is through the membership program. So this membership program is based on the Greenfins Code of Conduct. The Greenfins Code of Conduct is 15, a 15-step 15 guide uh, and a holistic approach to how to reduce your environmental impact. Now, again, this is a proven method, and some of the examples of these points involve things like anchoring, so causing the damage to the environment, the ecosystems that we're relying on. It could be direct diver contact, garbage management, or chemical discharge. This one could be quite a wide one in itself, uh, as it involves looking at sunscreens and wastewater management. But overall, what we're looking at is it, a way to identify elements of a business that have the potential to cause harm to marine life. So using this code of conduct, this is the core part that will lead into the two different types of membership that Greenfins offers. Uh, to help build sustainability into your business. We have a short video just coming up next, after which my colleague Erin will be introducing you into some more of the details of these two memberships. Green Fins is the world's first independent certificate to stop the environmental impact from marine-based tourism. Implemented by the Reef World Foundation in partnership with the UN Environment Programme, predominantly through its membership, which is available globally. Tourists are demanding more sustainable options. They are willing to pay more for operations that are aligned to their values on sustainability and preservation of our wonderful ocean ecosystems. They want to learn more about the environment and how to be involved in meaningful conservation. They want to book sustainable holidays with confidence. Greenfins provides the only internationally recognized environmental standards for the diving and snorkeling activities. Start your sustainability journey with Green Fins in these simple steps. For certified membership, sign up on the Green Fins Hub. Receive in person assessment. Consult and review your sustainable action plan with Green Fins assessors. Track your progress. Participate in the Green Fins Community Forum. For digital membership, sign up on the Green Fins Hub. Complete self evaluation. Build your sustainable action plan, which is tailored to you and your operation, achievable, practical, and cost effective. Track your progress. Participate in the Green Fins Community Forum. What do you get as a member? Guidance to achieve your sustainability goals. Endorsement from UNEP, Reef World. And other partners. Support from the Green Fins Global Community. Promotion on the Green Fins website and partner booking platforms. Access to new customers. And many more. With Green Fins, you will embrace and enjoy the benefits of adopting ocean conscious business practices, sustaining both your business and ocean health. Sign up today.
Alrighty, that's the Greek, the two types of Green Things membership. But before I dive right in, I would like to give a shout out to our viewers on Facebook. We currently have uh, from Bali, hello from Obese Ocean World, Tom from the Philippines, and Trevor Porter um, tuning in all the way from Singapore. So as uh, we have watched the video, we currently offer two types of Green Fins membership, which is the Green Fins Certified and Digital Membership. The Green Fin Certified members are marine tourism op operators who have received an in-person assessment from a Green Fins assessor within the last 12 months. Certified memberships are offered to countries who have adopted Green Fins and have available assessors. So what are these assessors? These are local Green Fins national team in their country, and they receive formal training from us to do assessments. We currently are active in 15 countries across Asia, the Red Sea, Central America, and the Caribbean. So you can see there on the map, we're all over the world. But um, if you are not yet a Green Fins member and your business is in these countries, you can check greenfins.net to learn more on how to be a certified member. Though the demand of green fins exceeded in these 15 countries, so we are constantly revolutionizing the green fins membership structure to continue to meet the demands of the industry and, of course, the sustainability demands of tourists. As of last year, we launched the Green Fins Hub to fill in the gap to support diving operators all over the world. From September 2022, we launched a new type of membership, which is the Green Fins Digital Membership, to reach diving operations where certified membership is not available in their countries. So right now, Green Fins is available anytime and anywhere. So to be a digital member is just easy. You just have to do four easy steps. First up is you have to head to greenfins.net forward slash digital membership, register for a personal account and your operation, finish the self-evaluation where you will be asked a couple of questions about your operation and the action plan builder. After finishing the self-evaluation, the hub will review your answers and suggest relevant action points from the solutions library that you will have the biggest improvement on your operations environmental performance. So each operation can choose four action, point, action points to implement over the year of membership. So who can be a digital member? Any scuba diving operator, snorkeling business, or liveaboard can sign up to be a Greenfins digital member. This will not replace the existing Greenfins certified membership, but instead allows operators without the access to green fins assessor teams to be a part of our growing network of, oper of operators improving their environmental sustainability. And not only that, with green fins digital membership, you will be endorsed by United Nations Environment Program and the Reef World Foundation and other partners. If we can also help you increase your bookings your business information will be available to popular booking platforms such as Paddy Travel and Zulu. Uh, social media marketing in, your, in Greenfins and referral social media accounts. And also you will have the access to Greenfins website and marketing materials to let your customers know that you are taking real action for the ocean. So with the Greenfins membership, you will have access to the Greenfins hub which is an online platform which is accessible on all devices, making it easier for you to track your environmental efforts, resources, and connect to fellow members a few taps away. So this is accessible on your laptop, on your mobile phone, on your iPad, any electronic device. So there are four major features in the Green Fins Hub. First up is the self-evaluation, which is exclusive for digital members. The self-evaluation is a key part of becoming a digital member, so the owner or manager will be prompted to answer a few questions about your operations practices. So this can be paused and continued when time is available, but we encourage you to finish it for you to become active. And then the hub tailors 
questions based on your answers and the information provided during the registration. Each industry has unique questions. So scuba diving, snorkeling, and liveaboard has a different set of questions. The questions are then worded to build user awareness and understanding and environmental threats. Second, you will have the access to the solutions library. So the solution li solutions library contains over 100 tried and tested environmental solutions for the marine tourism industry. Here you will find key information, handy tools, case studies relating to different threats and how to overcome them. No longer you will need to research and test solutions on your own. The Greenfins Hub now provides this all for you. Third is the action plan. All progress is tracked to the action plan where you can manage your annual environmental action plan with set goals. So the staff and member and teammates can work on this together and the operation can see the progress. So each action point has linked to a solution article containing resources and tips to guide you. If you need implementing the action plan, the community forum is there to help. So we advise you not to rush to complete the action plan. The goal of the Greenfins membership is to help operators reduce environmental impact in a gradual way that creates lasting change. We want to encourage meaningful activity in the Greenfins Hub. So once you do all that, you will become active and now you will have the access to the community forum. So the community forum is my playground. <laughs> so. Um, it's a space where all Greenfins members, national teams, partners, which is the trusted experts, can meet and collaborate. This is your space where you can ask help or recommendations for your action plan, suggest an improvement to the solutions library, or share your experience and expertise to fellow members who need help. In the community forum, we foster an, an, an aiding space where to get feedback from divers and operators themselves on how we can improve and contribute to the bigger picture, such as citizen science or improving our platform or uh, give feedback to improve our e-courses or improving our materials and resources. So not only that, we also uh, provide opportunities, so grant opportunities from our network. You can share also your initiatives and successes and celebrate and get support from the help from the wider community in your current conservation challenges in your operation. So for example, last July, June 8th, during the World Oceans Day, we had our first community-led coastal cleanup where Greenfins members uh, in the community forum did an event remotely uh, on World Oceans Day. So we had our first global cleanup community forum event. So. We are privileged right now to have an exceptional and invited speakers joining us today. These are Green Fence members, uh, digital and certified members. Uh, each speaker that we have invited brings a unique perspective and extensive knowledge in the diving industry. So for our viewers, if you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below. So to introduce our first speaker, uh, Simon Wenk is the co-owner of Aloha Diving. He is a scuba diving instructor and proud recipient of the Paddy Ocean Torchbearer Award. Originally from Switzerland, he pursued a career in, as a mechanic before diving became his passion. His extensive experience and love for the underwater world made him an invaluable part of Aloha Diving where he shares his expertise and ensures every diver has an unforgettable experience exploring the ocean. Next up, all the way from Spain, we are joined by Miriam Pratt, who is the second generation at El Rey Del Mar Diving Center, located in Costa Brava, Spain. The diving center opened their doors in 1990, and they have been working to offer a more sustainable activity for more than 10 years. Wow. And our last speaker has over 10 years of experience teaching paddy courses worldwide. Before joining the Dive Ninja team, Aitor Diaz was the owner of Azul Unlimited in Komodo, Indonesia. A certified Greenfins member, 
Eiter has a reputation for being one of the best mentors in the industry who really understands how to make knowledge accessible to all divers, regardless their levels. So we are privileged to have such exceptional Green Things members joining us today. So first up, uh, let's right, dive right in. I invite Simon to be with me. Thank you for having me. Hello, Simon. How are you? Are you in Thailand right now? Join us from Thailand. Yes, uh, I'm joining from Thailand. I'm really excited to share um, some, some knowledge I gathered during the last couple of years. Yes, truly really exciting. And um, Simon has been really active in the community forum and just so many things doing to state there's the sustainability efforts are really inspiring. So Simon, I have a question for you. Uh, Aloha Diving is already doing so much sustainability and conservation efforts in your business before Greenfins, before joining Greenfins. How has Greenfins enhanced this and why is it attractive to you? Let's start right before we became a member. So we got introduced by um, Paddy representative um, to Greenfins because we are telling them we do something different every dive trip. Dive, dive trip. Um, we let the people know that we uh, want to compensate um, our carbon footprint and giving something back to nature. And um, because using the ocean is for free, but it's the biggest assessment uh, dive business has and we should give something back so we thought how how are we going to do that we are we are a small team of five members two instructors one dive master deck and a captain so we don't have the resources to do every every week a beach cleanup so we we want to do something while working and um, therefore we partnered up with a local environmental foundation and mm -hmm. we support a pilot project with which um, grows seagrass in a sustainable way and get replanted so we can um, get a little bit blue carbon uh, compensated and this is what every guest sees on the boat when we introduce them to our boat and show them around and we let every guest know what we are doing, including Greenfin posters and so on. So, and this this uh, took off really good because Paddy um, pushed us, um, spread the words more, and um, they say, "Hey, Greenfins is there, and to become a Paddy Eco Center, you should be a Greenfins member." And then they say, "Well, it's." It's a month to go before the digital membership launched. So we joined right September 2022. And um, Greenfins for us is a, is a global recognized brand where we can um, speak about what we are doing and um, put the Greenfins logo on. And for us, we get quite a lot of, of attention now after a year of spreading the word. Uh, TV stations are contacting us with just last week a famous presenter from the UK here uh, filming um, about uh, eco-conscious snorkeling activities. And uh, we have the next, the next team around the corner uh, blogging. So it's it's for us doing something good, but as well, we get, I think, quite a lot back in value. Yes, that, that is really awesome to hear. And to seeing your growth as well, like you're already doing so much before Green Fins, and we're really glad to help you grow uh, to do more efforts, sustainability efforts. Uh, one of my questions, Simon, is, um, since you're really active in the community forum, what does the value does the Green Things Community Forum bring to your operation as an owner? Well, um, let me give you an example. Um, and there is a, a post or um, in the community forum about chemical discharge. And it let us think 
um, because we, we need to clean the boat, we need to clean the toilet, mm. and this is harsh chemical. And then we invested in some biodegradable cleaning agents, and mm. they are all imported in Thailand, which mm. uh, has a high tax tariff on, which makes them 10 times the price of a, a conventional cleaner. And we're still doing that at the moment, but there must be a, a better solution. Now, I did some research and find a company in Vietnam using pineapple um, waste. And um, mm. as I learned, 50% of pineapple is waste and 50% mm. we can eat. That 50% uh, we eat we can enjoy the other 50 goes to to dump sites or to incinerate plants and uh, not that great so we can use them further and we do some tests now on on um, uh, fermented uh, pineapple uh, and turning into them into a cleaning agent and without the community forum room i really never thought about that <laughs> and uh -huh. thing, the second thing is um, the digital wafer. Uh, Post-COVID, we moved um, from, from uh, in-class sessions to e-learning. Uh, Paddy mm -hmm. digitalized all forms so students can sign online. The only really thing was the wafer for fun divers. And I found on, on the, the community forum the salute um, with a wafer online wafer company suits us and we incorporate the code of conduct into the wafer as well so everybody dies with us sign to follow the code of conduct Perfect. yeah wow that is really awesome to hear and also um we're so thankful to you for being so active and taking that initiative to test out the pineapple uh, pineapple experiment is so excited to see the results. Um, I'm following it, by the way. <laughs> brilliant, so, brilliant, thank you. Yeah, and yeah, everyone, everyone is just like, oh, we're, we're, it's going to be done in quite some time, but we're so excited to see the results. So thank yeah, you, Simon. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll bring you back on screen in a bit, um, inviting Sam for our next speaker. Hi, so yeah. Next up, we'd like to introduce Miriam. So yeah, thanks thanks for joining us here today, Miriam. How are you doing over there? Thank you for having me. I'm really happy to be part of the, this um, webinar. Oh, well, yeah, we're very excited to have you here. I think, yeah, we've definitely been seeing you very active in our community forum and yeah, really contributing a lot to discussion. So yeah, I think you're, you're a great member to have on board. We just would. I wanted to ask the the first question I have for you really is, how has the the digital membership helped you to expand your sustainability efforts and connect with other Green Fins members? Well, we've been working for a long time to improve our sustainability and apply best practices in our own way, and when we discovered Green Fins some years ago. Uh, we were gladly surprised to see us reflected in their philosophy and prove that what we were doing was in the same direction as a world-renowned organization. But when you're working a lot on sustainable di diving for a long time, you can easily put the focus on a very small problem or, or challenge that can be very uh, difficult to solve because it, it it's not only depending on you. So now as a digital membership, um, with access to all kind of new tools and being connected to other members globally with common needs, um, we could find solutions to smaller issues that altogether make a bigger difference with fewer effort and with a more global vision. So we change a little bit our, our perspective and we are very happy to to do the change 
Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, it, it's something we can all get very easily sort of bogged down in, just focusing on like the bigger issues or something that's so complicated to tackle. And yeah, we could really forget about those those smaller aspects. Um, but yeah, you guys were already doing so much. You had the, I believe you started a citizen science project uh, already with the, before, right? For the, is it the groupers? Yes, we are in a marine reserve in the Mediterranean. So um, there are some studies about the group uh, um, population, but they are old. And uh, we wanted to do something about um, so spreading um, the importance of uh, marine protected areas with uh, some of these uh, uh, species that are endangered. So uh, we started the citizen, a really easy project, uh, citizen science, so that divers can um, um, take photos of the one side of the head of a group. So what, because their spots are um, um, can be can uh, help to identify a, um, yeah. a specific group. So now we have a, a list of uh, more than sixty groupers. And uh, a lot of participants are taking part of it. That's incredible. I'd imagine, yeah, that's probably all of the the staff and all the customers and stuff getting involved as well. But I see your your staff are also they're on the hub along with your operation. And it, have you found having the staff all together on the hub uh, has that helped to bring the wider team together to manage your membership and your your environmental tasks? Yeah, uh, we consider the staff members a key part of the diving center as they are our image and they are role models for for the, um, the customers. So they are a great value for us. And as we have this philosophy to always um, doing things better and Im improving sustainability, if the staff doesn't believe on something, it's very difficult uh, that they uh, follow the guidelines. So when we decide the action plan or when we do um, this type of things, we always think about all the members and how we can all together participate to achieve uh, whatever we think of. So when doing so, when uh, planning the, um, the action plan, um, so visiting the hub, uh, seeing all the tools, uh, the, the solutions on the library, the topics in the community, it helps us to discuss about it as a team and um, uh, find ways to implement, uh, to implement new actions while being convinced that we are in the right direction. Incredible. Yeah, that's yeah, it's really great to see yeah, like somewhere where the whole team's coming together. And uh, yeah, I think it just works so well when everyone actually is getting involved and is, is brought in on the same the same kind of level of knowledge. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us, Miriam. That was yeah, that was wonderful to hear. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you, Sam. Our last speaker, all the way from Mexico. Hello, Eitor. <laughs> Thank you for joining us so early. Good morning to you. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here with you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Um, one of our, so, since one of our questions are, you were previously a certified member in Indonesia, um, mm -hmm. now a digital member in Mexico. What is the value of the digital membership uh, when in-person assessments are not available in your country? So for me, when we joined the digital membership, I didn't realize the potential of being uh, digital until we really start to using the platform and the pre-assessment because in indonesia my company was kind of self-sufficient we have mm. our own boat transportation but the difference here in baja is that we run expeditions all over baja and mm. most of the logistics they are out of our control we don't own the boats, we don't own the transportations, we drive sometimes like 10 hours away and spend days in remote locations. So with the digital uh, membership and the pre-assessment, now we can reach all those logistics and do like kind of a small pre-assessment to, to see if our logistic or the operations that they are not belong to us, they tag along with our philosophy. You know, if they are like environmental friendly, 
and that has been really really helpful to do like to go deeper into the roots of all the operation all the logistics yeah especially when during the self evaluation there are some questions that you haven't thought of like like okay like chemical cleaning products yeah, that really affects <laughs> affects the wider picture yeah, with the self-evaluation, we kind of rebuild the logistic of most of our expeditions. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, one of them uh, is like five hours away from here and people spend five days over there. So we used to drive all the way up, come back on the same day, mm -hmm. leave the clients and five days later come back for them. Now we just do one round trip. We leave the transportation over there. So we mm -hmm. reduce the, uh, the footprint of doing like back and forth. Yeah. With the band, so that kind of a small details that uh, really help to to reduce yeah. our impact. Yeah. yeah, and also Jay has been um, involved in one of our solutions about uh, stickers. <laughs> so it, it was a long conversation in the community forum, and through it, we were able to like uh, help the wider community uh, make a solution out of it. And you know, it's it's nice. It's nice to see like. One dive center is doing this effort. Another dive center, like yeah, I didn't, th I didn't think of that, and uh, yeah, I'm doing that too. So it's nice to like just gather people in one place and just learn from each other. Um, so being a digital member, either um, how have the marketing benefits of the Greenpeace membership enhanced your business? Uh, we know you guys are already big and doing so many things, but uh, does the Greenpeace uh, membership um, help you enhanced in marketing and reaching out? To other customers yeah the thing with dive ninjas is that through the pandemic uh, mm -hmm. they were really really active uh, in social media with a lot of uh, conservation courses online so the online marketing uh, growth a lot on those two mm -hmm. years and then we were surprised when we joined uh, digitally the uh, green films and the brand recognitions worldwide mm -hmm. like that really, really helped to drag people from other locations that they were familiar with, uh, with green fins, in, especially in Asia, mm. much more presence over there. And the, all the digital tools that you offer helps out a lot with our marketing. It's also, a, we have the same person running the marketing or the social media for five years with yeah. Ninja, and it was like a fresh blow of air uh, to have like <laughs> tools. Uh, your marketing like he was like yeah we blow his mind like guys this is amazing thank you for <laughs> that. Um, a lot. and the brand green fins is well recognized i was also like i just as i said like surprised how many people recognize green fins from diving in asia and now coming all the way here to to baja mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah that's great to hear and also like during dive shows we also meet uh, customers that actually prefers <laughs> Uh, to dive with Green Fins members, and it's great to like have all of these operators like Green Fins uh, getting the visibility. So, thank you, Aitor. I think, Sam, this is now the time that we invite all of our speakers to join us here on the screen. And uh, to our viewers there on Facebook, uh, if you have any questions to our speakers, please drop them on the comments box below. Uh, this is just this is a rare time to like gather these brilliant members and answer your questions. Okay, well, we've got uh, one question here. Um, it's actually uh, yeah, going back to Miriam again. It was, I was just asking how long did it take to register and do the self evaluation? I think people are worried it, it takes a long time, or yeah, it can it can really build up, um, yeah, and take take quite a big task to do. But yeah, how long did it did it take you to you guys to do it? Um, you can do it in a few hours, I think. Yeah, less than a day for sure, and it's it's everything. It's really easy to to do and really friendly, so it's not a big big task at all. Oh, amazing. Yeah, I think I'm sure people will be quite happy about that because it can definitely seem like it's, yeah, it's just that task hanging over with everything else going on in a dive shop that, yeah, just worried it's going to take some huge assessments. Yeah, thanks. Erin, right. have we got another question lined yeah, up? Yeah, we got another one for, uh, for Simon, actually. Um, so there, uh, we're doing this webinar to encourage other diving operators to uh, consider the Greenpeace membership. So there was a question like, 
Um, how and why do you recommend the Greenfin membership? Well, the, the Greenfin membership uh, offers us um, to push out the global brand or the brand awareness. Um, it's for me, it's the community forum is an uh, inspiration, a knowledge database, and uh, to brainstorm solutions. So it's to, to widen the horizon. And it's, it's fun. It's really fun to, to be a part of the community. Okay. That's great to hear, um, Simon. Actually, that's the space that you want to uh, foster the community for. Uh, this is just not a one-way street where we tell operators how to do this and how to do that. It's it's a two-way street. And uh, we want to get insights from you from underground on how we do things and how we can improve things. And also, um, each location has, has a different challenge. Like, all of you has different challenges, like cold, we have cold water operators, we have tropical, and we have to like target those. And, and having you all uh, as members of Greenfins is like contributing to the bigger picture and how we can improve our resources and improve our solutions uh, to help more operators to be sustainable. Sam, I think we got another question. Uh, yes, I think we do here. Um, so yeah, we've got, uh, this question is for Ayator actually. Uh, so it's why use green fins over other programs? So I think people, yeah, have mentioned that Paddy aware is obviously quite a, a well-spread program. It's, it's something that quite a few divers have become like, uh, yeah, knowledgeable of, but it's, yeah. Why would, why would people choose green fins over something like that? I'm, I think for us, Greenfins is a little bit more complete than other programs because go more in detail in the daily operation of the dive center. And that was a gap that we really feel in, like, it's a lot of uh, other programs that go into conservation, coral reef, how to take care of the environment, uh, like good behavior with uh, our dive. But for us, it was missing that part of the daily operation, like what kind of... Uh, chemicals we can use or not use to clean our uh, wetsuit. All those small details that happens every day and that they have a, role, a lot of uh, or a big impact on the on the environment without even knowing. Like everybody can see a diver kicking on the coral and because you mm. see it's in front of you. But what you do every day with the staff at the shop, uh, just running the operation is an impact that happens every single day all the time. Yeah, like kicking the coral maybe happen once every 10 dives, mm -hmm. but washing equipment, all that stuff is every single day. So that helps to go more in detail in the in the operation. So. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, I think, yeah, I found, I mean, even within just conservationists and other groups, like when you're so focused on some things, it, it's it's really easy to to actually miss all of the little steps that can add up and all of the other things that are just part of a routine, right? They're just, mm -hmm. there's something you do. And then until someone actually points it out and questions it, it, it's something you don't consider as, yeah, something you could change or yeah, yeah, something that would kind of do that. And yeah, I think, yeah, the benefit is, yeah, we try to make them manageable. It should be manageable for everyone. And yeah, it should be something that's gonna, yeah, be easy for us to also change a lot of the time. Uh, yes, I agree with you. Um, yeah, we, we still have a couple of other questions from our viewers, but uh, I wish we could answer them, but we have little time left. Uh, maybe uh, before we say our, our goodbyes to our uh, wonderful speakers right now, though, um, maybe a one-liner um, quote from all of you on uh, Inviting other operators to be members who are not yet members, or just one major takeaway. Can we start with Miriam? <laughs> well, um, to me, Green Fins is um, a great. Um, I don't know how to say it. Um, it's uh, a great opportunity for diving centers to improve their sustainability in a friendly way. I mean, um, there is not um, only rules and prohibitions and requirements. It's uh, everything. It's it's easy for the diver and for the diving center to follow and and to to see a, a lot of uh, possibilities. So it's a really cool way to to improve on that. 
Thank you, Miriam. Simon? I like to promote the Greenfin's Dive Guide course. This is a really <laughs> good program which, um, which all seasoned diving instructors can just go back a step back and refresh uh, the knowledge on, on, on sustainable diving activities. Thank you, Simon. And also, we updated the course last May, so it's just fresh information. So those who need to refresh your dive guide e course, do it now. <laughs> um, Aitor. Yeah, I think also the the course for our uh, instructor has been really helpful. And they now, as a part of every single briefing, they include way more information about how to protect the environment, uh, coral reef. So that is, is great. And every time we can, we encourage our DMTs also to take the course because we are a, a training facility and we teach a lot of professional levels. And it's a, now it's a part of my IDCs. When I teach IDC courses, I do like a special workshop about green fins, specifically for green fins. So that's been also really cool. Yeah. Thank you, Arthur. But yes, um, th we are grateful. Thank you for all three of you for taking the time to be invited to share your um, your experience with Green Fizz. Um and our deepest gratitude uh, for joining us today. Sam? Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Because yeah, this is really about like everyone coming together and yeah, we all need the people on the ground like you guys actually feeding this kind of stuff back and yeah. And really pulling all together so we can we can make these kind of impacts together so thank you very much yes and actually uh, just one point uh green fins will be at dima next week so if anyone is interested to be a green fins member and to meet other green fins member we will be there and just uh send us an email at info at greenfins.net if you want to know more so thank you either miriam and simon for joining us today sam we have reached the end of our webinar. We have. It's sad to say, yeah, a, a quick one, but yeah, short and sweet, I think, is the way <laughs> to move forward with these, isn't it? It really is. So, so for those who are not yet Greenfins members, Greenfins is now available anytime, anywhere, in any device, just a few tabs away. If you are a diving operator that, um, where Greenfins certified membership is not available, Greenfins digital membership is the right one for you. So to know more, click on greenfins.net forward slash join. Yes, go ahead, yeah, join up, join with the community forum, let's all work together. It is time to take action, it is manageable, and we can all do it together. So thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you around soon. This is Sam and Erin, and please follow us on social media at Green Fence. Bye. Bye.